I am not okay. <laughs> um, I made like three videos and I haven't posted them. I don't know if I'm going to post them. I think maybe I will still, but just keep in mind when you watch them that those kind of came first and then this is what's happening right now. So today we're going to chop my baby into a bunch of pieces <laughs> because so ever since we moved here, we've had a pest infestation that has been killing all of my plants. And you guys know how much my plants mean to me, so I've been like really upset and running around like a crazy person, spraying them all down, washing them, trying to save my plants. Um, the bug is called Thrips. They're like one of the worst pets that you can get. I mean, pests that you can get. They like lodge their eggs into like the tiniest little crevices of the plant and the dirt and stuff. And it often doesn't matter how much you do, like it's hard to get rid of them and you usually have to start over. My pothos is my pride and joy. She's been with me for like five years and you guys saw her wrapped around my bedroom and trailing down from my bookshelf when I just moved here. And I was so, so praying that she did not get these stupid thrips that were investing in the rest of my plants, but she did. I have brought her into the bathtub, washed her multiple times, sprayed her down daily, and it's not working. Basically the new leaves are coming out really damaged, so I'm thinking that the thrips may be like sticking, they're like laying their tiny, tiny eggs in these leaves and there's just like no hope. I'm thinking the only way to try and salvage part of her, save her in a way, is to chop her up and start propagating and just start fresh. So it is heartbreaking because she's so long and beautiful and majestic and literally one of my favorite plants and I feel like she's like part of me. So get into that more in a second. I'm gonna catch you guys up. I'm gonna catch you guys up on where I'm at right now, what's going on. Yeah, we're gonna take Strand by strand, I've got my scissors. Fortunately, I don't have plant scissors right now, so we're just gonna have to use regular scissors. I've got my colander, <laughs> which I'm gonna put the pieces in that are salvageable. Anything else that's super infected is going in a bag, tied up, garbage. But we're gonna give her a thorough wash, the pieces that I can save, and then we'll be propagating in jars. I already have a propagation going because I did take a little bit from one, and it's growing roots and it's going well with that one but we're gonna get a bunch going and hopefully have a bunch of you know vines going again and hopefully we can grow her strong and healthy and big again and those stupid thrips can f off and be out of my house because I don't think I can handle any more of those things emotionally honestly so I'm just gonna ditch the new leaf unfortunately I think the things are like literally nesting in here so we're gonna Ditch that. Let's see if the next leaf is salvageable. It's got a little bit of damage, but I think it's still saveable. So we're gonna cut here. Usually when you propagate, you do do in between each leaf, cause then you propagate them together. Let me quickly grab actually the one that's propagating and I'll show you guys. Quickly though, cause I'm worried that this one's gonna get infected. Um, So you can see that these are all individually this one doesn't have roots yet, but some of the other ones do. Um, so you put them all together, and then can you see? There's some roots growing in there. So that's how you do it. And the reason why you cut them individually like that is because that's how you get the plant to be bushy. So if you just did like one long strand and propagate it, yes, you could do that, but it's not gonna be as bushy when you plant it together, right? Like. When you guys saw mine, there's like a strand that was coming here and there and they were like all around. So that's how you get it bushy. I totally just lost the strand I was working on. Where were you? There it is. Okay, <laughs> so let's continue. Um, so just to give you guys an update on what's going on in my head right now. I have been feeling very disconnected, honestly, um, from myself, from my spirituality, for my intuition. Yeah, I haven't been feeling like myself. And I think this is something that I've always had some challenges and it wasn't completely because of the move, I don't think. But at the same time, oh shit. Ah, one second. I just spilled dirt all over the place. Okay, anyways. <laughs> 
this is a good spot. We're gonna cut to here. This next one is infested, but these are all healthy leaves, so that is good. I keep losing my strand. This video's chaos. I'm sorry, guys. Like, no, I'm not sorry. I am chaos right now, and I have not been in the place to post, but I wanted to post something, so this is me trying to post something for you guys. Um, I feel like I've been kind of having a bit of a hard time mental health wise for a while, but the move definitely made it worse because now I feel more isolated because I'm so far from my family and my friends. And I've just had so many fresh starts that are just scary in many ways. Um, new job, that kind of thing. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. I feel like in certain ways I'm, I've taken steps backwards from where I wanted to be in certain ways. Like for one, I feel like I've lost my intuition, I don't know I haven't lost it, but I've just been so upset and depressed that I feel like I'm not connected to it. So it has been my, it has made my magical practice just like, I don't know, almost non-existent <laughs> to be completely honest. I felt very disconnected from that. I felt very disconnected from like reading tarot and all the things, the magical things that I normally do. And I feel like the magical parts of me are almost just like disappearing is how I felt. So in that, I have felt that in a way I'm like almost dying inside and to literally watch my plant, one of my favorite things in the world, <laughs> slowly die. I've been feeling like it's this twisted metaphor of watching myself slowly die inside. Even though I've been fighting it, I've been fighting to save this plant. I've been probably fighting to save this plant more than I have been fighting to save myself. It is so easy to give people advice and be like, you know what, just do this. Just start your day with morning affirmations. Just start journaling. Just start with gratitude. Like, it's so easy. You think it's so easy, but it's so freaking hard. It really is when you are in a really bad place and when you're very, very depressed. Like, I'm talking, this is the, probably the most depressed I've ever been. And I know I need to. But it's really hard to get the motivation and the drive to just start doing things to take care of yourself and find yourself again. Whenever I used to feel really down and I feel like I needed to release emotion, kind of like work through that stuff, I would do things like go to local events, do breathwork ceremonies and things like that. There's like nothing like that out here. And I've asked around and they're like, yeah, like Windsor doesn't have that stuff. Like there's like no spiritual community. But like this is great. This is fantastic. And yes, there's online resources, but it's not the same. I just really miss having that like in-person spiritual community. I feel like in a weird way, I'm having a funeral for my plant right now. Like that's actually how I feel. Like I feel like I'm just saying goodbye to a long-term long time friend. But at the same time, it's like this weird rebirth of a new era. I don't know. A new era is what I meant to say, not error. Um, also, I'm sorry, I sound very congested right now. It's because I've been crying for hours. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna keep this leaf, but we're gonna ditch this one. Ian's so sweet too. Like I had a complete meltdown last night and he went on Amazon and he ordered me like an insecticide because I've been trying all natural like neem oil with uh, dish soap and water. And it's just, it's been helping to an extent. Like I think it saved most of my plants and I've just been like drenching them in it, but I don't think it's saving this one, so. And just an update, um, neem oil appeared to be saving the majority of my plants, but turns out it didn't. Um, about a week or so, maybe it was, after filming this video. I can't remember how long it was, but I actually ended up just straight up having to dump most of my plants in the garbage, including my beautiful, large money tree. I was so upset. I was in tears. I was so upset. But I will show you a video. I will insert a clip here 
of what I found in a couple of my plant pots, you can see that there are millions of these tiny little eggs from these thrips. And this was the moment that I, my birds are all hyped now that they hear me talking. Um, this was the moment that I realized I, I had lost this battle, that there was no way on earth that I was gonna get rid of all these things. And the best hope I had at my plant propagating safely and the few plants that weren't infested to survive was to in fact get rid of most of the plants that showed any sign of infestation. So my house is basically mostly plantless right now. Most of my plants are gone and just keeping it very simple right now, making sure they're completely out of the house. And once I am 100%, you know, confident that these syrups are gone, then I'll talk about getting some new plants. But we're just trying so hard to make sure that these syrups are out of the house. And knock on wood, I haven't seen any for a good week, week and a half. So hopefully we're done. This is what got me most upset was that my plant was still pushing out new growth, like trying to still be healthy and alive and I don't know if you can see it's so hard to focus but it was literally attacking all of that so you guys are gonna see my house tour video go out and we can all appreciate that video for what it was because at that time I wasn't dealing with a pest infestation so you guys will be able to admire the beauty of my pothos and my ivy in my room and how beautiful they looked at the time. Because yeah, it wasn't a problem yet in that video. This leaf is healthy. This one's been chewed at. And we're getting to a lot of the damaged foliage now. These ones are really, really damaged. You can see the um, where the bugs really sucked out all of the so it's like a combination of that, like this brown dryness, but also like a lot of it is like chomped at, which is upsetting. One of my issues I think I'm having with being able to create YouTube content, because I'm going to be straight up forward honest with you guys up front about it. Like I'm really having a hard time creating content right now. And obviously I'm depressed and that's gonna affect it. But like, my channel always came naturally to me. Like, I get so much inspiration and ideas and like whenever I did a brainstorm, it would flow so easily. And I mean, like I just shared with you guys as I was learning, I was just sharing with you guys as I discovered new things in my own practice. And that's, that's all it's been. Like I've never claimed to be an expert in any way. I teach, but I teach through my learning. So like, as I learn, I share with you guys. And if I'm wrong about something, then I'm like, cool, like, correct me. Like I, that's, it's just been my journey with spirituality and witchcraft. And unfortunately, the downside to having a channel that's so tightly connected to your life, which I feel like every channel is in some aspect because you can't completely disconnect disconnect your personal life from YouTube. It's just kind of the way it is. I think the problem with that is because mine is so closely connected to my personal life and my spirituality that whenever I go through personal challenges or feel disconnected from my spirituality, it affects my YouTube channel because it's like, how am I supposed to make videos on spirituality and witchcraft? How am I supposed to create spell videos or share what like it doesn't matter what it is it's it's hard to share about spirituality when you don't feel spiritually connected to your own spirituality and that's like where I've been I, I, I'm trying to trying to I feel like I need to try harder to reconnect um because I've definitely felt very disconnected so that's kind of like where I've been at at the same time, I've been trying to figure out like, okay, maybe this is the time for almost like a new beginning. Like maybe my content just needs to change a bit. Like maybe it needs to evolve in its own way because I'm evolving. Yeah, these are all damaged. These are only garbage. 
Um, yeah, maybe it needs to evolve in a way. And I, I still feel that the only problem is like, I just, it's like, I'm trying to figure out how it needs to evolve. Like, what do I want to create? What do I want my channel to look like in the future? And I'm having trouble seeing it. I'm having trouble figuring it out because again, I just feel so lost right now. Are you okay? You're not okay. Are you okay? You are a healthy leaf. So we're gonna snip this. See how long she is? Like, she is so majestic and long. It's hard for me to figure out where the end is. Ugh, this is so difficult. Okay, so, and I tell ya, like, if after all of this, and I start a new plant, those things come back, I swear to God, like, I am going to go psycho on those little bugs' butts, if they have butts. I was gonna say something else, but I'm trying to be appropriate for YouTube. <laughs> trying to watch my word use. This is where it gets to the point where it's just like, there's so much damage, it's like, how much do I throw out? Like, it's heartbreaking how much I have to throw out on this one. Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Like, I feel like this is the laziest camera setup I've ever done. <laughs> Like, can you even do, see what I'm working on? Maybe I'll just, I'll back it up a bit. I'm sorry guys, I am not in filming perfection mode right now. I'm in, let's try and save what I can for my plan mode. This is upsetting, but strangely enough, it's actually, I think it's helping. I think it's helping because every day walking into this room and just watching my favorite plant in the entire world slowly dying in front of me while I like fight to keep her alive but nothing's working has been really emotionally taxing. You know, I've made so many videos about advice for people when they're going through challenges and stuff. And I think right now I just need <laughs> some advice from you guys. To be completely honest, this is like, it's been a rough time for me. So if you guys have ever gone through a really big move, like a big shift in your life, felt lost, felt like you're losing yourself or you're losing pieces of you that feel like home, like my plant. If you have any advice about how to cope with that, how you got through that, yeah, I would definitely love any, any pointers, any advice about that because it's been hard. It's been difficult. I'm very close with like my family and my friends. Having them five hours away, like yes you can call, but it's not the same. I miss having my close, close people around me for sure. If you guys have made it this far, if you're hanging out with me, I appreciate it. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, you're basically at my plant's funeral slash birth. So thanks for coming to my plant's funeral. <laughs> thanks for joining me. I've been feeling, I can't tell you guys how much guilt that I have been feeling over not posting. I, that's like one of the worst parts of this is that I feel so guilty about not posting, about not creating. And I'm like, I'm literally letting my dream slip away. I'm literally letting my audience down. I am like, it's guilt, it's frustration, it's just like anger towards myself. Like, why can't you just get your shit together and figure things out? Like, why can't you just post a video? Why can't you just get inspired? Why can't you just create? And the added pressure of those emotions, it honestly just makes it all worse. Like, how do you get inspired? How do you feel good when you're just constantly putting this pressure on yourself? to show up and be okay. Like, why can't you just be okay? Goodbye, my beauty. It has been, now I'm gonna start crying again. <laughs> it has been amazing growing you these past four, five years, but we're going to start fresh. We're gonna give my, my baby pothos, she is a baby now. We're gonna give her a good wash and make sure there's no eggs, no bugs, nothing left on these leaves so we get some nice, healthy propagations. So, man, I look very pale right now. Um, I've got no makeup on. All right, so this is what we have, healthy foliage-wise. Very disappointing. <laughs>
but it is what it is. Um, initially when I was washing my plant, I was just bringing it into the bath and just kind of bringing it under the water, running it under the tap. But we are going to take drastic measures because I don't want to take any chances of any of these stupid bugs or eggs being left on this plant. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it an actual literal bath. So I've literally run the water and I have my neem oil, which I've been using so much lately. We've got that. And we've got some dish soap. So we're going to add some of those. So this is like what I've been putting in a spray bottle, a combination of soap, dish soap, water, and neem oil. That's what they suggest online. So here's my foliage. We're going to dump her in and we are going to really wash her. Along with physically washing her myself, I think I'm also honestly gonna just like, just let her soak for a few minutes too. All right, so I've actually been watering, oops, watering my plants with water from my Brita filter, just because I don't fully trust tap water. I don't know, especially being in a new area and not knowing what the water quality is like. Some plants are very finicky with water from the tap. It could have like chlorine and other things like that. So it's honestly just best to use water that you know is well filtered and is not too harsh for the plant. And especially baby plants that are so small and vulnerable, I just don't wanna take any chances. So we're gonna use my Brita. It's not cold, you don't wanna shock your plant either. So we actually just keep the Brita filter out of the fridge. My boyfriend has very sensitive teeth, so he doesn't like cold water. I like cold water, but I just use ice cubes to keep my water cold, so I've been doing that. So it's kind of like a win-win because he gets room temperature water, but then I also can use the room temperature water for my plants. So like that's actually been okay. So we're gonna fill these up. I definitely think I'm gonna need more than three jars. So we're gonna get some more jars. I just heard something like on the window, like the back door, but there's no one there. If my boyfriend needs more jars, I'll buy him more jars, but we're gonna use these. He usually doesn't use like that many at any given time either, so I think we'll be okay. So I just remembered something I didn't show you guys. Even though I've been fighting to keep my plants alive, I got a new plant, but it is not an indoor plant. I guess it can be, but it's also one of those plants that are strong enough to be outside and I wanted it outside. So I got this plant for specifically the porch, which is probably the safest place for it to be right now. Let's be real here, because this house is freaking infested. I'm gonna show you guys because she's a beauty and I've wanted one of these for a really long time. So let's add a little bit of positivity and show you my new plant. So she is an elephant ear. Look at the size of the leaf compared to my hand. This is the size of the leaf compared to my face. She is beautiful. I've actually wanted one of these for a very long time. And um, yeah, I was actually going downtown for my weekly yoga in the park. And there was actually, there's a lot of events that happen around here. They're having their like car show. So the whole area was like blocked off and stuff. So I actually had to park my car further than I usually do. And then during my walk there, I noticed that there was this man and he had a whole bunch of elephant ears and succulents right outside his house. And um, yeah, they're really good prices. So this one, let me show you the size again because it's pretty big. This one was only $25. He had different ones ranging. There was like 20, 25, 35, 40 for like the really big ones, but she, she's big. Like she's still really big. $25, that's a good price. I feel like if I got this plant at any like Bradford greenhouse or something like that, she would have been way more expensive. I'm really excited about this plant. She's really pretty. I wanted something nice and big and tropical for the porch. I feel like it just adds a little something something to the porch, which is nice, which is super dirty. I really need to sweep this. I just been overwhelmed and consumed with everything else, but. I'm gonna put these in here and then we're gonna give them a final rinse under the sink. We're gonna take a little bit out at a time, let the rest soak, give it a little shake. I have pants on, by the way, guys. They're just really short shorts. And this 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 t-shirt's really long. But this is my comfortable, I feel like crying and staying home wear, so just so you know. All right, so let's give this another rinse. All right, so here's my jar. 
So we're going to take these, put them in here. We're going to put all the babies in here. So yeah, you just want to make sure that their stems are completely submerged so that they can start to grow roots. Do that. This one might need a bigger jar. Mm -hmm. I am going to save all the big pieces for now. Um, the longer ones, I'm going to put in a bigger jar. I just want to have some longer pieces. So we're going to go put this in my room beside the other propagating one. So it's getting good light, but indirect light. Because I noticed that these babies will burn really easily if they're in direct sun. So be very careful. So let's get some more pieces here. This one's a big one, but... It's kind of all together like this, so I should be able to stick it in a small jar still. So we'll grab that, we'll grab that. This one's a nice, this is a really nice piece. That will go in really nicely like that, and that will give me more bushy foliage. My birds are going wild because they hear me talking and I think I'm talking to them. Yes, birdies! They go crazy when I'm talking on camera. They're like, you're talking to me! They were so funny the other day when I was playing with them. Oh my gosh, they're just like... Maybe I'll insert some videos. They're all like phone, like vertical videos. So it's not like professional vlog content. But they were just so funny the other day. Like it was just pure chaos because they were climbing all over me. And then Chico, I had my headphones on. And Chico was like trying to like bite inside my headphones. She was just like going at it. And then they were like playing with my necklace. And then they were trying to chew like this and another bracelet I had on my arm. And it was just like, I'll insert the video here. But it was just so funny because, here, let me do this. So I actually have a spot to insert the video. But it was so funny because Lola, he was just like, he saw himself in the camera. I like the screen because I had the forward facing camera on so he saw himself he got all excited and then he was like posing and then he was like jumping on the phone and all you saw was his like butt his like tail and then in the middle like behind that you can see Chico and all her chaos it's just so much happening at once <laughs> very funny I have to say like I've been struggling but in the midst of all the struggle their playfulness and goofiness and stuff and just spending time with my birds actually has been very helpful like my birds are sweet but they're also like Chico in particular is a vicious dinosaur at times so <laughs> they're definitely not dogs but they like they have their own I don't know I think pets in general just comfort you in different ways right like every pet's unique and they're still like really sweet like they'll fly on me and they'll play with my hair and it's actually super relaxing when they play with my hair and stuff and yeah I don't know it's like also just very, I guess, comforting, even in the midst of their chaos, even though they don't always listen to me. <laughs> I'm happy they're here with me. I'm happy that they're part of my life because they definitely do add joy to my life. So this is our next bundle. You guys get to follow the journey with me. Maybe I'll be showing you guys the progress of my pothos growing again, becoming majestic again. She's already majestic. I still have parts of it here but maybe the process will be just watching her grow again and watching me grow again. And we will grow together. I'm not crying, you're crying. So I'm chewing on candy. Probably should get real food. I will, I promise I'll feed myself, but right now I'm chewing on candy. I'm gonna finish up these and I will show you guys the final result, but I think you guys got the gist. So I am officially done. I'm relieved that it's done. I'm sad about how naked this wall looks without that plant. I hope she grows big and strong and long again, and then I'll put her back up there. I'll show you what I did. Um, I got to keep a couple of the long pieces. It's just too difficult to propagate them that way. So I did have to snip some more down and do some smaller jars. I did find like a vase to put the longer piece, but again, it's just too hard to bend it that way so it fits. It just doesn't sit well without the leaves going under. So this is the one that's been propagating for a while. It's got some roots in there. Just a little baby one, but we also have another one there. And another one there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and that one. Makes it feel a little bit better to see only healthy leaves and not all the dead and damaged leaves before. So I had a weird day when I filmed that video and I didn't really make a proper outro at all whatsoever, but uh, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out with me, 
in the midst of just like a really crappy day, a really emotional situation. My plants, my pothos is still propagating over there. She has my vanity, it's all hers. I've just been grabbing my makeup and going to the bathroom. I'm like, you can have this space. This space is for you to thrive and to grow. And yeah, I've been still going through it. I feel like I've been in a little bit better spirits and just trying to motivate myself to do things. I've been editing this video that you guys are watching right now. And yeah, so I'm, I'm working through it. I'm gonna be okay, but it's not easy. But thank you so much for all your love and support. As usual, you guys are amazing. You guys are so appreciated. I am just so grateful to have you guys around and I hope you guys have an amazing day or night whenever you're watching this. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye.